Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Anar and I'm a self-taught software developer. Today I wanted to talk about what you need to learn to become a backend developer. I have been working full-time as a backend developer for the last two years. In that time, I've interviewed backend developers and I have been interviewed for backend development roles as well, so I can definitely shine some light onto what you should be learning to become a backend developer. In the end of the video, I will give a detailed plan for what you should learn and in what order in order to go from somebody brand new to tech to somebody that can get and hold a backend development job. Backend development usually refers to the development of non-user facing applications. There are a lot of different types of non-user facing applications, so let's look at the most popular type of backend, the backend of a web application like Google or Facebook, and exactly what you need to learn to be able to develop this type of application. You may be wondering why does a web application like Facebook even need a backend? Well, one key trait of backend code is that it's not publicly accessible and it actually lives in a protected environment. Using Facebook as an example again, imagine if the logic for leaving comments lived on the front end and therefore was accessible by your browser. You would be able to open your browser, modify the front end code and do whatever you like, like change other people's comments. What actually happens when you try to do something like leave a comment is the front end sends a request to the back end and then the back end decides if this request is valid or not. Web application backends serve a lot of different purposes, but perhaps the most important one is adding that layer that can reject invalid requests and execute valid ones. So I mentioned Facebook comments. Comments are a form of data and data is typically stored in a database. Web application backends typically interact with a database and being able to work with a database is a fundamental skill for any backend developer. For more junior roles, you may get questions in an interview about SQL queries and for intermediate or senior roles, you will be asked questions about designing a database, which entails things like table structure, use of keys, etc. Learning SQL is not super hard. You can practice in your browser on w3schools.com. W3schools is a free resource and they have clear and consistent Size explanations. Alternatively, you can run MySQL or PostgreSQL on your computer and follow a tutorial. As long as you understand common queries like select, update, and delete, as well as the different types of joins and subqueries, that should be enough for a junior backend development role. Backend developers are also expected to be comfortable with at least one programming language and one backend development framework. Backend development frameworks are like templates for building backends that also come with a lot of the tools that you need for developing a backend. A backend development framework is typically tied to one programming language. Some popular languages and frameworks are Python with the Django framework, Java with the Spring framework, and Ruby with the Rails framework, also called Ruby on Rails. The most important thing to remember is that a backend developer is a type of programmer. And for programmers, the most important skill is programming. You should be strong with at least one programming language, preferably a popular one, like the ones I mentioned earlier. What I mean by strong is that you should be freely able to write software with it. And the best way to get strong with a programming language is just to write more software and practice programming. When you write new code, try to challenge yourself and strengthen your fundamentals. Fundamentals include loops, variables, functions, classes, polymorphism, and recursion. These are fundamental skills for any programmer. And in order to clear interviews, you will also need to strengthen your algorithm and data structure skills. If you are brand new to algorithms, reading a beginner friendly book can be very helpful. I really like the book Grokking Algorithms and I'll add a link to the description. Beyond that, practicing on coding platforms like LeetCode and HackerRank is the way to go. The reality is, day to day as a backend developer, you will almost never need to use any of your algorithm knowledge, but for clearing interviews, it's pretty important. Once you are comfortable with at least one programming language, one backend framework, and SQL, you are ready to be a backend developer. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that you need to learn every backend technology out there. There's just too many things for one person to learn. The curriculum I will outline is very detailed, so don't get overwhelmed. Just remember to take it one piece at a time, and before you know it, you'll be done. So a curriculum for a backend developer should look something like this. Step one, learn a simple programming language. I recommend Python, but any simple and popular programming language is a good choice. Learning your first programming language can be very, very hard. I recommend taking classes where it's either one-on-one, -on -one, like a private class, or it's in a small group where the instructor can spend some time with you. An online course might work for some people, but it's not going to work for everybody. I had one-on-one -on -one private classes when I was learning my first programming language, and I found it to be very valuable. If you aren't comfortable working with command line tools yet, I recommend using an online IDE when starting to practice your coding. If you search on Google for online IDE, you'll find a lot of different options. I will go ahead and add a free one to the video description. Step two, 
Once you're comfortable programming, start doing exercises on hacker rank and lead code. You can do this while reading an introductory algorithms book like Grokking Algorithms. I will add a link to Grokking Algorithms to the description. The more exercises on lead code and hacker rank you do, the better you will become at programming and the better you will become at doing the type of exercises that you get at coding interviews. Step 3. Go through a SQL tutorial. W3Schools has a nice interactive tutorial. I'll drop a link in the description. If you need more guidance, an introductory course in a popular SQL like MySQL might be a better option for you. As long as you understand the SQL queries I mentioned before, you should be good. Step 4. Build a backend server with a backend framework like Django. At this point, you will also need to get comfortable with using command line tools if you're using Mac or Linux. For guidance with this step, I recommend reading the official Django documentation. I'm going to put a link in the description to that as well. Step 5. Create a database and connect your backend to it. I will add a link in the description to the MySQL documentation, which explains how to set up and run a MySQL database on your computer. Instructions on how to connect your backend to a SQL database should be found in the documentation of the backend framework. In our case, we would look at the Django documentation. Once everything is connected and wired up, write some REST APIs that retrieve data from your database and insert data into your database. This is actually what a typical backend developer spends most of their time doing, so the more REST APIs you write and the better you become at writing them, the better. Step 6. Once you're comfortable doing everything from step 1 to 5, you're ready to work as a backend developer. What you should focus on now is actually clearing the coding interview, and you can do so by focusing on algorithms and data structures, as well as doing more practice questions on platforms like HackerRank and LeetCode. So if you've completed everything step 1 to 6, you're actually ready to be a backend developer, but there's one very valuable technology I want to mention as well. This technology is version control, which essentially allows you to incrementally save your work. The most popular command line implementation of this technology is Git, and I highly recommend that you learn it. Open a GitHub account and use Git to upload the work that you want your potential employers to see. This is a comprehensive curriculum that will be enough to get you a backend development job. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments section. I would be happy to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. I'll wrap it up here and I'll see you next time.